The Weekly, hosted by the editors of Pro Builder and Pro Remodeler, starts now. Is density dead? That word is anathema in the world of real estate development because it can instantly conjure opposition from NIMBYs with concerns about the new housing development's impact on traffic, property values, and the proverbial character of the neighborhood. Yet density, typically defined as the number of housing units per acre, seems to be getting momentum as a possible solution for bringing more housing into markets where expensive land, rising construction costs, and restrictive zoning created an undersupply of places to live. Minneapolis, Oregon, Seattle, Santa Clara County, California had passed laws that loosened single-family only zoning, and other states like Maryland and Virginia had similar legislation pending. In a 2019 interview with Pro Builder, Bill Ramsey, principal with KTGY Architecture and Planning, when asked if he was seeing the anti-density wall among municipalities cracking, said the following, We are seeing a willingness to discuss the need for increased density nearly everywhere, but the response to higher density proposals tends to vary by jurisdiction. Some are more willing or more open to it than others. That response tends to boil down to understanding the reasons or need for increased density. It's no secret that land costs, along with increased construction costs, have made projects harder to execute. In many instances, the more subjectively the planning or zoning guidelines are written, the more creative we can get. But then the coronavirus pandemic hit. Now the industry is reevaluating whether multifamily buildings and projects with duplexes and triplexes and fourplexes are desirable anymore. Will cities decline? There's a presumption that consumers are wary of bunching up with other residents in elevators, stairwells, and other common areas and are more open to leaving the dense cities for the suburbs and rural areas with less crowds and more space. As the first shelter-in-place orders rolled out during March, John Allen, president of Brown Haven Homes in Blairsville, Georgia, pivoted his company's marketing strategy to connect with buyers looking for sanctuary through ads on social media, Facebook, and Instagram with the tagline, Peace is Priceless. Unlike the smaller towns, the markets that we build in, so we're, we're, we're telling them it's peace of mind. It's what they're buying in the form of a home. Sure, yeah. We've repositioned our marketing branding strategy. We're partnering with uh, Group 2 up in Philadelphia, and uh, we came up with Peace of Mind is Priceless. Speaks okay. very, very directly to those quarantine buyers whose net worth just dropped 20%. Yeah. So, you know, it's <laughs> you don't want to buy a home right now, maybe, but... What's your peace of mind worth? Well, we, we suggest it's priceless. But not everyone wants to move to the country or has a job that allows them to work remote and live anywhere they want. Thomas James Homes, through its trademark by TJH brand, is increasing the availability of houses in big city markets like Los Angeles, Silicon Valley, and Seattle by tearing down old single-family homes and splitting the lot to build two duplexes. Thomas Beadle? CEO and co-founder, explains why his buyers are staying in the cities. Look, in these prime urban markets um, of the west side of Los Angeles, Silicon Valley, and the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, Bellevue, Kirkland, home buyers want to be close to work. And the work is in the city, right? The work isn't in the suburbs. And our suburbs in these major metropolitan areas are not suburbs of Dallas, where it's 20 minutes outside to play now, let's say. Yeah. Our suburbs with traffic are two and a half hours, two hours outside of the city. And so uh, they may only be 35 miles, but they're two hours in, in traffic. And so um, the home buyers that can afford it want to be close to work, close to school, close to friends, close to culture, restaurant activities, right? The beach, uh, it, they, they want to be in these prime neighborhoods. But what they want is they want a quality house. And the average age of homes in these markets that I just talked about is 80 plus years old. Right. And so the home buyers really want brand new homes. And so we're able to provide a brand new home in the same marketplace at the same price as trademark is an 80 year old home. And so, again, it's, it's great to be able to supply the market with um, comparable housing or way better housing at comparable um, prices. Density for some is perceived as a big apartment or condo complex casting its dark shadow on the neighbors below. But density can boost housing stock in creative ways. California builder Chumark had the challenge to develop a vacant lot in Chino Hills next to a community of single-family detached homeowners. 
Any plan that looked too multifamily would have attracted opposition. The Trumark team found in the city's zoning code that the definition for single-family attached dwellings required that at least four feet of the adjoining units be connected to be considered attached. The builder modified a two-story duet plan with larger bedrooms and shared side yards and satisfied the attached housing definition by connecting four feet of the first-story roof line between homes. The attached units blended in with the rest of the neighborhood because the units looked detached from street level. Daryl Patterson, president of Housing Design Matters, shared a recent blog about how multifamily housing can survive the pandemic with three forms of attached housing, all of which include private means of egress and private outdoor space. They are paired villas, townhomes, and stacked flats. Dan Paralek, principal of Opticos Design, has been a longtime advocate of narrowing the housing supply deficit by building missing middle homes, defined as shelter that are on the scale of a single family home, but with multiple units. So I know there's a shortage of housing, and there are too many people who need to live near work, near schools, near transportation, near other amenities. So pandemic or post-pandemic, shouldn't density be part of the solution? I'm Mike Byrne with ProBuilder.